Hey there, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna look at four of the most underrated features in Blender, in my opinion. Number one. Let us not dwell on anything and just go straight in. Do you ever work on a scene and you have a rigged character, a beautiful composition, and you find yourself having trouble? Say you wanna switch from pose mode to object mode for the character because you want to add a new modifier to it or do something in the weight painting. And sometimes Blender won't let you do that straight away. You have to go out of pose mode for the rig Well, there is this feature under edit on the top left of your screen that says uncheck or check lock object modes. And that will let you switch from object mode from the character to post mode of the rig. Because there have been days where I just got frustrated because I didn't know why I couldn't select the character mesh. And that was because I was still in post mode. And now I can just, and now I can just directly select the object I want to select and go back to my rig whenever I want. And of course, when you experience this problem, but the other way around, say for example, you're animating your character and you keep selecting your body of the character and that can get quite frustrating as well. So then you have to go edit and lock object modes. So the opposite of what we just did. Number two. In this case, I have a particle system or a geometry node system to scatter some of these spheres around my tree but they have yet to be placed correctly because of the origin that lies in the center of the mesh. Normally, I would go into edit mode and fix it by lifting up the sphere in edit mode uh, so it sits on top of the origin or hangs below the origin, whatever you want. But there is this nice feature under options in the top right corner and effect only and say origin. And now you can, for example, enable snapping. I usually use snapping with control and then drag in my gizmo and snap it to the top of your sphere or the bottom if you want to or the sides, whatever you like, of course. So that's a pretty neat trick if you ask me. And under the same menu, don't forget to disable effect only pivot, of course, because then, then you keep doing that for every object you select. So keep that in mind. But that is not all. So we have the effect only for the origins However, in this scene, I have a hierarchy set up for these two simple objects and the sphere is the parent of the torus. And as we all know, we can individually move the torus around the sphere and there's no issue there. But whenever we want to move the sphere, the torus will move with it. But then again, there might be instances where you just want to tweak the sphere's position. And there comes in play our friend, effect only parents. Now with that selected, you can move the sphere individually from the torus and nothing else will happen to the animation. Number, Number three. <laughs> if you have ever used characters or maybe assets you link into or append into a new scene and you come across a completely pink object. Well, I know I have. And in that case, it's just a matter of relinking your textures. But nowadays with PBR textures, you have a base color, roughness, a specular map, bump maps, height maps, normal maps, Google maps, whatever maps you want. That can get quite tedious, especially if you have multiple materials or shaders where you need to do this. So there is a way to save a little bit of time. Uh, so for example, if we select this and go to file external data, find missing files. Now locate your folder. For me, that's in characters, Roka, and then of course the texture folder, the texture set of the hat I need to select. And I like to go over to the right and change the display mode. So it's easier to select them all. With them all selecting, I say find missing files right here. And now this complete set is done. So all I have to do now is grab all the other objects and do the same thing. Keep in mind that you have to select your object that you will locate your textures for and everything will be fine. So once again, go to file, external data and say find missing files. Locate your folder and select all the textures and there you go. Now in a matter of seconds, I have all my textures back and it looks great again instead of individually going into my texture nodes and finding, locating all the textures I need. Number four. I think I can speak for every one of us that we like to use multiple passes. 
So for example, you like to use your mist pass, your normal pass, your depth pass, emission pass, ambient occlusion pass. Those are all nice to include into your render for compositing reasons, right? Let me render this scene real quick. And normally you would individually save all of these into your preferred folder. And that's all fine for an image. Um, but if you have to do that, but there's only one real way to do this for animation. And usually what I see for this is people use an EXR multi-layer. And that's fine. You can store whatever passes you want into an EXR. There are high bit rate as well, so that's perfect. Well, an EXR can get up to one gigabyte per file. And like I said, if you have a, a sequence of, and like I said, if you have a sequence of 500, even more frames, that will stack up to a tremendous amount of gigabytes, right? So that's the reason I usually go for a PNG sequence. Open up your compositor. Keep in mind that the output should be set to your temp file. Uh, because there's always going to be rendered one extra frame. I don't know why the compositor doesn't override the output settings here on the right side completely. Don't ask me why. I don't know. It's been like this for ages. And for the, for the rest of them, we're going to use the compositor editor and we're going to use a file output node. We'll link up the image and on the right side panel, go to node. And if you don't have this panel open, just press the N key. Make sure that the base path is the location where you want your sequences to be saved. And then you can go ahead and name the first input. When you're done renaming, we can add a new input and drag the miss pass into the next slot and the ambient occlusion in the next slot. I go back in and add one more input and then start renaming. Ch changing only the prefixes. So I change the prefix here to mist, AO for ambient occlusion, and the last one I usually call emit. And now when you render this, you will get four sequences in your selected folder. So when you render this, you will see that they appear in the folder I selected. Uh, for me, that is Blender, Render, and then Abstract Worlds. And the first frame is already done. Let's wait for the second one to appear, and there they are and they sort themselves out neatly into their sequences. It saves me uh, quite a lot of space on my hard drives, and I still have the possibility to composite in a external compositing software. And that's it guys, that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please leave a like, leave a comment down below if you have any questions. As always, stay creative. I'll see you next time. Ciao.